Professor Apfel Steit from Stellenbosch University is joining me in studio now. He is going to debunk some breast cancer myths for us. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, listeners. It's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for the invitation. Great. So we are going to debunk some breast cancer myths today. Now, the first myth I have for you um, is that the incidence of breast cancer in younger women is increasing. Is this true or not true? It is not true from what we can deduct. In younger women, you do not have deleterious effects of lifestyle yet. Mm -hmm. So in younger women, it's a predominantly genetically uh, caused disease. And therefore, because the genetics haven't changed very much over the last 10,000 years, we accept that the breast cancer incidence in younger women is not increased. And individual statistics actually bear that out. If you look mm -hmm. for breast cancer registries, which are age adjusted, you'll find a fairly constant uh, incidence of breast cancer in young women. In older women, it has gone up. Why do people think that it's increasing in younger women, do you think? I think we have uh, many role models who come forward now. Mm -hmm. Just think of Kylie Minogue. Yeah. Um, think of other young, uh, celebrities, prominent people, yeah. celebrities. Uh, uh, Angelina and Jolie. She Angelina did not have She didn't cancer. have it, but she, she had she the, had the gene, double, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so okay. we hear it more often, and that's why we think it. And breast cancer is talked about more um, openly. Mm -hmm. A last effect is that we're seeing many more breast cancer survivors that are actually surviving long term. Yeah. And this gives you the appearance that there's that much more breast cancer around. Mm -hmm. In previous years, you wouldn't talk about it, and your life was short. Mm. So there was not that much to reference to. All right, second myth, we have the contribution of chemotherapy to reducing mortality is significant. That is indeed so. The uh, chemotherapy helps us a great deal in reducing the mortality. Mm -hmm. But the biggest contributor is early detection and treatment. Okay. I cannot emphasize this long enough. If you have, for example, a screen detected woman, her life expectancy is that of virtually uh, a normal woman. Yeah. If we wait till the uh, breast cancer has reached the stage that the woman can feel it in her breast, her long-term survival is reduced to about 50, 60 percent. Wow. Yes. All right. Myth number three. Smoking increases your risk of breast cancer. Is that true or false? You mustn't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> smoking is just but bad. Smoking is plain bad, but it generally does not increase uh, breast cancer risk. It increases your risk of an awful lot of other cancers, like, mm -hmm. for example, lung cancer, mm -hmm. uh, throat cancer, uh, gastric cancer, but there's ah, no breast. definite relationship with breast cancer. Next one. It doesn't make a difference where you are treated. Yeah, and uh, there is... Uh, I want to couple this with another myth. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer is not an acute disease. It wasn't there yesterday and today you have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work like that. Breast cancer works like a chronic disease and for most women there's a run up before they can feel the lump in their breast of about five years. Really? So this means whether we treat you today, we treat you tomorrow, in a month's time or even in three months time doesn't mm -hmm. make much of a difference. So you should look around and you have the time to do this. Just calm down when your breast cancer has been diagnosed and you might wish to go for a second opinion and be aware of the Gary Player principle. You know what that was. No, what is it? <laughs> he so famously said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And we know that the influence <coughs> from uh, the influence of selecting a treatment center mm -hmm where more than 150 cases of breast cancer are seen per year versus one where only occasional breast cancers are being seen, we, the influence of that is bigger on the mortality than any chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormonal treatment, biologicals. So simply selecting your treatment center properly gives you a much better chance, 60% better chance of long-term survival than simply uh, running off and having a um, uh, having your breast cancer treated at the uh, nearest person who wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And we should actually in this country uh, come to the um, state where we actually have cancer centers that treat 
uh, that collect all the cancer cases and then build up the expertise to do that properly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this, strangely enough, in the big public hospitals here, for example, in the Western Cape. Uh, our colleagues at Khrodoskia, my unit at uh, Tagbuk Hospital, we're seeing each about uh, 500 to 600 new cases of breast cancer per year. Mm -hmm. There we have the expertise. And conversely, um, it may not be everywhere so in the private sector where yeah. uh, an awful lot of different private surgeons are taking care of breast cancer. That's interesting. Now the last myth I would like you to debunk for me is if you have breast augmentation, breast cancer is harder to detect and you are more at risk. Number one, mm. breast augmentation with prosthetic material does not give you more breast tissue, so you're not more at more risk. It also doesn't change your internal hormonal environment, it changes actually nothing. Okay. All right, what it does do so, however, is if we're talking about screening mammography, it can hide a cancer. And so it's important to go to a screening center where actually mammography is understood, especially in the augmented breast that requires more uh, exposures and it would be preferable to add an ultrasound to the mammogram. Mm -hmm. And uh, under these conditions, breast cancer can be detected early. If you look at international series, uh, it is by no means clear that the uh, detection of breast cancer is seriously hampered by the presence of prosthesis. Great professor, thank you so much for joining us in studio. I think you, you shone some light on a very important topic today. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for inviting me.